Hey, 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 hope you are ready for a long get ready with me. Get your coffee, get your tea, let's chat. Now, I'm gonna end up with this look that you see here, but I gotta warn you, the journey that I take from start to finish is a little scary, and this look gets wild in the middle somewhere where I, I nearly give up on the look, but it finally just came together decently. So this is what we end up with. There's a lot of random chat along the way, and I'm just pretty honest about some things I've been thinking about. So, you know, if you're easily triggered, don't watch. I just want to share that. I don't talk about anything controversial, but you know, you never know how people receive things and whether people are easily offended by opinions and things. So if that's you, I welcome you to just chat with me in the next video, okay? But if you have a little bit of a thicker skin and you don't mind opinions that may differ from yours, hang out with me. Let's chat for a while and let me know what you think of this look with the Cosmos palette from Anastasia. Okay, hey guys, welcome to today's video. We're gonna do just a get ready with me and share some random thoughts about things that I've been thinking about lately. I'm freshly showered, I am moisturized. I just finished blow drying my hair and I need to curl it, but I'll do that later. And as you can see from the clock, it is entirely too late in the day to be just putting on makeup. But <laughs> it's July 4th, it's the day off, and that's just how things are gonna go today. So let me start off with putting my hair back. I wanted to swatch two palettes that I've recently purchased. So if you watched my eyeshadow collection and declutter video, I recently purchased Cosmos from Anastasia, which is the newer one. I have Nouveau, if you remember, with the green like linen style packaging. And I also purchased Rose Metals. Now this one isn't new on the Anastasia lineup, if you will. This has been out for a while. Uh, I've just been slow in picking it up because, you know, it's this constant cycle of <laughs> purchase and declutter, uh, which is life. And let me just pause and say a thing about that. Well, actually, I'll talk about that while I'm swatching the other one. So Cosmos, this is one I wasn't sure if I really would vibe with these colors because they do feel a bit all over the place, but I'm going to try a look today and just see what happens. So let's do some swatches and talk. I'll go this direction on the top row and then that direction on the bottom row, and I'll try to just do it on the back of my hand so we can take a look together. So we had some chuckles in the comments of the last video, the eyeshadow video, about just this constant cycle of declutter, purchasing, and how crazy it is. And I agree, but I also made a joke about like, why don't we just embrace it? Why don't we just embrace it? Like instead of beating ourselves up constantly for wanting new things, for looking at shiny new pennies and enjoying them and buying and enjoying them for whatever period of time and then letting them go and then judging ourselves for that, right? Why don't we just embrace it? So let's talk a little bit more about my thoughts on that and I'd welcome your thoughts too. Now, there is a situation where I don't think that it's healthy to do that or embrace it and that's that if you are on a limited budget or you're watching your budget or you're trying to build your wealth or whatever you know you don't want to be spending frivolously on nonsense look at this color this is called galaxy i'm trying to think of the theme for either star trek or star wars and my mind is blanking so just imaginarily insert that okay that comes off more black than it does on the finger which it's bluish you see it's more blue but it looks like it translates into like maybe you just have to layer it for that effect so th that's the top row so anyway if you're trying to watch your budget or build wealth or anything like that don't go buying frivolous nonsense but let us assume that you are in some comfortable established you know place where you're not stressed out about money or feeling like you need to watch your money and you've got a little bit of disposable income, whatever that means for you. You got a couple dollars here and there and you know, you've taken care of everything else. This is the assumption I'm making. You've taken care of your home payment. If you have one, a mortgage payment, if you're still paying on a mortgage or your rent, if you're renting, you've got all your other bills accounted for, you've got food in the fridge, you've got uh, money that you're setting aside for retirement, or if you're in retirement, you're using your retirement money as planned and not overspending. You're, you know, you have some savings and doing your own investing and, and those kinds of things. Like, let's just take that for granted. Then what is really the harm in enjoying things and then passing them along to others? And by the way, I do this too. Like, I am just as prone 
to purchase something new as I am to walk into a thrift shop and be like, what's up in here? And get a dress off of a rack or look at a purse in a thrift shop or something like that. So it goes both ways. Like I enjoy people's secondhand items as much as I do purchasing new Okay, so it goes both ways. Anyway, the point I'm making is that especially we ladies, we have so many rules in our head about how we're supposed to live, what we're supposed to buy, how much of it we're supposed to buy, how much we're supposed to use it before we're allowed to discard it or get rid of it or pass it along to someone else. It just gets to be really overwhelming. And at some point, we create these like restrictive rules in our head that drive us crazy for no reason. I am proposing that it is okay for items, whatever they may be, to flow in and out of your life the same exact way that everything else does. I've said this before, people have this impression that when it comes to like makeup and fragrance that you're supposed to use it until it hits pan and you can't see anything more and then you're supposed to go around the edges and scoop out all the powder same thing with like products, like lotions and things like that. You have to use it all the way down to the end. That may or may not need to happen. And the same thing is true with fragrance and all of that. And yet we don't have these same standards for other things in our life. Like I have on this little robe. I love it. I wear it probably <laughs> five days a week as I'm getting ready. I have several other robes that I use when I'm cold and whatever. I don't feel like I need to wear this robe until it is tattered battered and can't be worn anymore for me to have gotten good use out of it. I'm okay using it until I've had my time with it, laundering it and passing it along to someone else who might be interested in it or passing it along to Goodwill or something like that. Likewise, people pass things on to me. <laughs> people pass on, I've gotten eyeshadow palettes from people, I've gotten fragrances from people, I've gotten clothing and purses and shoes and all sorts of stuff from other people when they have had their time with those items and they're ready to pass it along. Anyway, it's a whole like philosophy thing and my point is I think it's totally okay. So, and let's stop beating ourselves up. Like let's stop putting all of that artificial pressure on ourselves and creating rules that the natural universe doesn't give to us. We create those rules. We humans create those rules in our mind about how often and how much to use something and when we're then allowed to either pass it along or buy something new. So I'm tired of playing those games. I'm getting older. You know, I want to discard in my mind all of these imaginary rules that we make up about how we're supposed to behave. I do have some rules that I stand by and they're more about how we treat each other and other people. And I've shared those in other videos. But all of these other artificial pressures that we put on ourselves about how we're supposed to live, enjoy the world or not enjoy it, when we're allowed to enjoy or not, and how we consume things or not, I'm just, I'm done with that. Like, I'm going to enjoy what I'm going to enjoy. I know what's going on with my household financially. We're good. I'm, I'm totally fine to like buy a new palette. We're fine. So anyway, that said, and you figure out what that means for you. Back to these swatches. So here is the Cosmos palette. I have to say swatch wise, I'm not thoroughly like impressed. These swatches here are reminding me a little bit of the Huda Beauty palettes that I don't really get down with. There are some Huda Beauty items like the lipsticks, the lip liners, some of the powders that I really jive with and I think are fantastic, but I've never really been like an enormous, enormous fan of the Huda Beauty eyeshadow palettes. I don't know, they just, I'm not really crazy about the texture. So that's kind of what I'm feeling, but let's see how these perform on the eye today. I think I'm sort of drawn to this color here. I think I want to play with this color and maybe this one here. So let's see if I can create a look out of one, two, three for today. And can I go ahead and swatch the Rose Metals palette while we're hanging out? I might change my mind and play in this palette. So again, I will go across the top row like that on this palette and then down the bottom. Okay, so then I'm going to say something that maybe feels a little bit contradictory to everything that I just said. So, audiobooks. The latest one that I have been plugging through, and I have to say I haven't been as faithful with listening to it as I probably should be because it's not the longest book. But for some reason, I've just been distracted doing other things and haven't been into my audiobook experience lately, which I don't, I don't like. I don't, I don't like it at all. <laughs> I need to get back into my audiobook game. 
because I do enjoy them and feel like they enhance my life. But right now I'm listening to, it's like a self-help book called Essentialism. And apparently it's been around for a while. I'm just late to the game. It's something that I thought I would listen to because as you all know, I'm constantly moving. I'm in motion all the time, trying to accomplish so many things every day. Here's the top row of the Rose Metals palette. And I have to say, this is probably more my vibe than this Cosmos palette, but I'm gonna play with this one. I'm committed to playing with this one today. So I'm gonna go to the bottom row now. Uh, so the book Essentialism is all about the art of saying no to things that have less payoff for you so that you can say yes to the things that really matter. And it's all about creating space for three or four. I think those are the numbers that he uses, roughly speaking. Three or four things in your life that you consider to be a priority. Whatever that means for you, it's gonna be different from person to person. He contends that the people who say yes at work, for example, all the time, are not the ones that are the most valued by their organization. They might be the ones that end up the most, perhaps, used. I don't think he uses that word, but burnt out because they're always saying yes and doing things that leadership may want them to do all the time versus things that grow their own personal interest and career. And he contends that people that really dig deep and get good at a few things, it could be two or three, four at the max, I'm making the numbers up. I don't know that he puts those exact numbers on it. Those are the people that are going to be the most valued and respected for their boundaries and seen as experts in areas that might be key to the work. But it makes me think about life in general. So really quickly, here's the Rose Metals palette. This is my grungy vibe right here. This is more bright and interesting, maybe for summer. So just to challenge myself, because I'm like, oh, I definitely want to play in this palette. I think I'm going to stick to the original plan of this one this one and either this one or maybe that like greeny silvery goldy color there we'll see and i might use that like as a transition shade in the back let's see i'm going to use hourglass today very quickly the vanish airbrush primer as my base i'm very fully moisturized with several layers of like serum and moisturizer and then i'm going to use the veil eye primer as the eyelid base so back to essentialism this is something I have been talking about with the team that I lead at work, which is deciding what your priorities are. You've all heard, and if you haven't heard, I'll tell you right now, the, would you call it like a, a parable? I don't know. I always get mixed up with these terms, but a story that teaches you something or a metaphor rather for something in life. And it's about the rocks in the jar. So if you've heard about it, you know that the concept is that to fit in the things that are important in your life, the jar is a metaphor for your life, you have to put in the priorities first. What are the biggest things in your life that you want to be focused on? And then think about what the next level of priority is as pebbles that you can add in. And then sand is all of the minuscule stuff that you do on a day-to-day -day basis that really doesn't like move your life forward that you can then fill the jar with. And the idea is if you do it in reverse and fill the jar with all of the day-to-day -day BS that doesn't really bring you big change, movement, joy, evolution in your life, all of that, if you put the sand in first, you really don't have time then for the big rocks. So what does that mean for me? I'd love to hear, by the way, from you, what are the big rocks for you in your life? For me, I have had a lot of time to really think about what that means, especially at this point. You know, our kids are getting older. We have two teenagers in the house um, and we have one that is post-college and trying to launch off into you know, his own adult life. And so as we're helping them with all of that and realizing that our years with our children will come to an end in terms of them being under our roof quicker than we're really ready for. Oof, yes, this got deep quick. You got your coffee? Uh, <laughs> we really, we, my husband and I have been really having lots of conversations about like, what do we want to be doing and cultivating for ourselves so that we're both being amazing parents to our kids but setting ourselves up for our own personal emotional stability, joy, and success once they all fully launch off. What are going to be our big rocks now and in that immediate future, which I don't know. I mean, the, the teenagers still have to go through college, so we've got, we may have 
you know, six to seven, maybe eight years, depending on how long it takes for them to be out on their own, doing their own, their own thing. And if you are older and or a parent, you know how quickly time flies. That doesn't, that seems like a long way away, but it really isn't. You know, six years will fly by super fast. So we've been giving a lot of thought to like, what does that mean for what we want to be cultivating in ourselves now and in the future so that when they are full on adults, we're not left just decimated because our entire identity revolved around being a parent, which we both value the most. So let's talk about the rocks. For us, our primary rock, we value family and parenting first and foremost above all else. That is where the majority of our energy and time goes, bar none, bar none. Like making sure that our kids are doing okay, making sure that they're getting the right kind of parenting, making sure that we are preparing them for the worst and the best that this life has to offer is of primary importance to us. So that is our biggest rock by far. Then after that, I have a little bit of a surprise in that the next biggest rock in my mind is work, work, work if I'm being completely honest. I am going to maybe regret getting Galaxy and I'm gonna to try to create like a dark effect out here, a little shadow on the outer corner and maybe even through the crease. We shall see, I wish it looked like that on the eye but I have a feeling it's gonna just kind of wash out a little bit. So the reason that work is a surprise as a second thing is because, let me just say by the way, Obviously, like faith and health and all of that are big rocks. That's like, let's just take that for granted and understand that those are in there also. So then let me talk about, uh oh, here we go. Here we go with the look drama. I'm gonna need Jesus to take the makeup wheel here for me. So let me do this very lightly and see what we get. There was a time when work might have been like third place and I would have put friends above work. And I'm in a different place now where, and I've been in that different place by the way for a long time, where probably since maybe like early 30s, I got serious, serious, serious about my career. I've always been a hard worker. I've always been serious about work in general, but I mean, in terms of growing my career and making sure that I was prioritizing it over other things. I definitely have to say that that was like a, an early 30s to mid 30s when I got super serious about like, well, what, is, what do I really want my career to look like? I think part of what happened at that time, I've got to clean all this up, is I came to understand that the direction that I move in in life is set by me, not by my employer, not by anyone else. I'm not one of those people that believes that the man, the system is doing things to me. Do I think there are some dynamics at play there? Of course, like I'm a sociologist at heart. I'm very well aware and understand that there are other factors at play sometimes that we don't have control over that shape our experience and existence. Of course, I understand that. And that includes societal factors, systems, you know, ways that we, anyway, systems that our society is built on. I won't get into a whole bunch of that. So of course, but I also believe, especially if you are in the US, that you have access and ability to change your trajectory and that it is your responsibility to see that, take advantage of it, and figure out what that means for you. Doesn't mean it's gonna be easy, doesn't mean you're gonna find your way right away, doesn't mean you're not gonna stumble and fall and make mistakes and maybe move backwards sometime. But the point is that you have opportunity, possibility. If you're able-bodied and able-minded, and sometimes just if you're able-minded, even if you're not able-bodied, there's a universe of possibilities that are available to you if you continue to work at it. They're within reach. Whether you reach them or not is another story. My point is that upgrading your life in different ways is maybe more within your reach than your upbringing might lead you to believe is the case. 
Sure, there might be circumstances that are out of your control or some things sort of bearing down on you. For example, I'm going to give you an example. If you graduated college with a lot of debt, that's going to have a different effect on you than it might for someone who doesn't have to be worried about all of that. You're going to have a different life path and different things to consider than people that don't have debt. I know because I was one of them. I graduated college with significant debt. My point is we can't blame our place and circumstance on what others do or do not have or privilege or whatever that other people do or do not have. We each have to find our own path and way and work with the hand that was dealt to us. I firmly believe that that is the way to maintain your own sanity because it correlates closely to that concept that comparison is the thief of joy. So if we're constantly looking at other people and what they have or don't have, the privileges that they had, the advantages that they had, whatever it is that you think they are, you know, maybe someone uh, was born with a silver spoon in their mouth and you have resentment over that. Get over it. We don't have control over those things. We only have control over ourselves and the circumstances that we cultivate for ourselves or not. And I'm not suggesting that it's easy to like dream yourself into being a billionaire. Of course not. I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying we need to work. We, me, you, and even that person that's born with the silver spoon in their mouth. We all need to work toward what it is that we want the life that we think we want to lead i'm not loving <gasps> this disaster i created but let us let us see this through and see where this goes back to the rocks and the priorities because that's what this is all about the point i'm making with all of this is that work is rock number two family first that's the first rock and then the second rock is i'm putting by the way this glitter primer on my eye to hold this down. Then the second rock is work because I put my time and energy into my work. However, I have boundaries with that as well. I think I am gonna go in with, it's called Quasar. Oh, that's kind of funky and fun. So I have boundaries with work too. For example, I usually, not always, but I usually will stop my day at five to six o'clock. However, I have worked later and I will work later if it's something that I know takes advantage of my strengths and skills where I can contribute strongly to some outcome at my organization. I will work weekends if we're working on a special proposal that needs my input and support. I'll do that. But I do that short of driving myself completely crazy. I, I've done that. Like I've done, I've, I've done the grind where I stay up late into the hours of the night where I, I wonder if I use this makeup brush cleaner to clean this up, am I going to damage my skin? We're going to find out because I'm going to do it. I've worked late into the night. I've woken up at three or four in the morning to finish things, finish things for work, document reviews and things like that, proposals. And I will do that again, but it's going to be like on my terms when I want to, not because I feel like I have to. So I feel like I, I'm at a point where I've put in the grind to show my worth at work, if that makes sense. And so I can continue to show my worth without overextending myself. You have to do that initial work though. I've, I've put in the time, I've put in the energy to show myself through the decades of what I'm able to do. And I'm still one of the hardest workers that anybody knows. But I also found some boundaries. I'm totally using a Christmas tumbler, the most wonderful time of the year, and I have this much shame about it. <laughs> so then my third rock for me personally is my YouTube and other hobbies. Because, and then I put YouTube in there because YouTube is about me. This channel and the other channel are about me, my creative energy, my contribution out there to all of you who I've never met. Hey everyone, maybe we will meet someday. My sharing of myself with all of you and me also enjoying the energy that you give back as a result. Like that's super important to me. It's a way for me to express myself, enjoy myself, in a way that's not dictated by anyone else, no one tells me what to do with either channel. You know, it's completely my choice what I talk about, how often I talk about it. And of course, it's your choice as a viewer whether you wanna listen, like that's your time that, by the way, I put some of this 
blue super cluster i love that name on here and i think it's going to come across as an icy blue on the inner corner i should probably put on my concealer and foundation so let me just see what this looks like i can always reapply so while i'm doing this i will say thank you to each of you who take time to listen to this channel and to comment and for those of you that listen and don't comment, that's totally fine too. It's your time, it's your energy, it's your right to click in and out of a video and you decide whether you wanna to listen to the whole thing and whether you feel like leaving a comment. And by the way, if you haven't left a comment and want to, it is totally okay to leave a comment just saying, hi, I'm here listening, I'm totally fine with that. And if you don't, that's also okay. There's no pressure to, is my point. I assume that you watch YouTube because you enjoy it it does something for you. It makes you laugh. You learn something. Maybe somebody on YouTube uh, brings up some emotions for you. Like there's some sort of therapy sessions on YouTube. Maybe you just enjoy the company of like a chatty video like this. Maybe you're looking for product reviews. It gives you something is my point. It brings something to your life and you get to decide how you want to engage with YouTube and how much you want to interact with the creator. So it is totally okay. Any way you look at it. The only thing that's not okay in my mind is leaving rude and nasty comments. And we've talked about that before, so I'm not going to get into all of that. So before I talk about the last rock, because I've honestly forgotten what the last rock is. I had it all in my head before I started. I need to figure out what I want to do with this dark piece here. The look always comes together, by the way. I think I need to maybe do a little bit more in here. I'm looking at a mirror over there in case you're wondering why I keep looking over there. Like right in here, it looks it's looking a little sparse. Let me see if I can do that without totally disrupting the rest of the look. And it's this color again. Look how beautiful that is in pan. I wonder if I just swipe that across the space, how that would look like. So I have to try it again. I remember what the last rock is. <laughs> It's just like leisure, leisure time, leisure time, relaxing time. And for me, that's together time with the family because rock number three, remember, is YouTube and all of that, which is my leisure. And that counts my research, okay? That counts the time that I take to look up products and things like that. That it's like for the fragrance channel, the time that I spent sampling things, all of that is included. See, I've taken like the mushroom of this all the way up and now I'm angry with myself. I, I overdid it, I overdid it. But that leisure time, so when I talk about family being the first rock, for us, let me tell you what that means versus the last rock, the leisure time rock. We prioritize our meals with our kids. Like we make sure that we have, like on the weekends, for example, that we have breakfast together. That's a big thing. Even if they don't want to eat, if they're not hungry, they are asked to come down and sit at the table and talk with us for a little bit. My husband is a great chef. He makes like homemade biscuits on Saturdays. I'm talking about like with the buttermilk and everything. And I'm paying the price. It's sitting right here right now, y'all. I don't have any business eating biscuits, but his biscuits are so good. Uh, you know, we make eggs, biscuits, bacon, all that stuff. Big breakfasts. Breakfast, breakfast, breakfast. Did you ever have somebody in your life that said breakfast? I still do. And I love them dearly. And then during the week, you know, we make sure that if like for now they're home for the summer, the two little ones, the other one is off working. We make sure we have healthy lunch food for them and they make their own lunches. They make, you know, sandwiches and that sort of stuff, sort of a thing. And then for dinner, we always have a healthy meal together. Sometimes the meal is a little bit unhealthy, but we always have a protein. We feature a protein on the plate, a vegetable. And then for the kids, because they're growing and they're constantly hungry, we do give them like rice and, you know, some sort of carb potatoes and things like that. Um, pasta sometimes. I realize like from a diabetic standpoint and glycemic standpoint, that maybe isn't the best choice, but point being, we prioritize protein and a vegetable and then a starch on the side as the, the third string player on the plate. And we talk at the table. We do like rounds of questions and things like that. We do trivia just to spend some time together. And we do encourage them to watch TV with us afterward and maybe watch a movie together just to have a little bit more together time. And we always go and say good night at the end of the night, give them hugs, you know, talk with them about their day. If they're having any individual issues or problems that they need parental support with, we do that like one-on-one -on -one with them. And you know, that's our time together. I realize I look a little crazy telling y'all about our family life with this stuff on because my look is having a little trouble getting together. I'm going back into that space dust color and just kind of blending this out on the top and I will fix this. I will fix it. I promise I'll fix it. <laughs> so then the difference between that parent time and our leisure time together is 
that that stuff happens that I just described, it's like a regular. And then if we can and we can weave it in, we also find time, for example, on the weekends, they all have different hobbies. We will split up and enjoy different hobbies with them and that kind of a thing. You know what I mean? This is my opinion. If you like to do Project Pan, more power to you and I will watch your video and I will like it and I will give you a cheer. But for me, I don't like the pressure of having to use products. Part of that, what I enjoy about makeup and fragrance is what and whatever is the variety that I get to choose what I want to do and there's so much to play with and then so when you restrict that to a few products because you're doing a project pan for those of you that don't know project pan is when you usually it's when you have a lot of stuff say a lot of makeup like let's say in this case it's foundation I have so much foundation I am going to choose three or four and make sure that I use them all up to say that I use them to feel like the joy and the pleasure and the satisfaction of having used up products. I get that, but that's just not for me, but I understand it's for other people. However, all that said, I have committed to using this up. So I guess that is a pan thing. And this is the Estee Lauder Futurist Hydro Rescue. This has SPF 45, which I love. It's moisturizing at least it says it is, and I find it to be a very juicy foundation to put on the face. Uh, and it's a little light for me right now, but I'm gonna go for it. Part of the reason I wanna use this up is because I do like the foundation. I don't love the packaging that it's in. And do I remember that this has come out in new packaging? Like there's the color, it's a little runny. It's probably a little bit flat for me, like a little bit too, it's got a little peach in it, but neutral. I probably want something a little bit warmer, but. I've gotten into the habit of putting foundation on the, see, see how it's like, it's actually slightly cool tone now that I look at it, neutral to cool toned. Anyway, it's, the color's tawny, 3W1 tawny, well W means warm, so what am I talking about? Maybe I don't know what I'm saying. Maybe this is warm. It is a little bit warm. <laughs> Where was I going with all of this? Oh. Do we know if this has come out in new packaging? It is something I would consider repurchasing again, not anytime soon because I have a gazillion foundations. I'm a foundation junkie. I love me some foundation. Ugh. I can go play with foundation. If I don't have to worry about like washing off my face in between, if like I could just like, whoosh, like do like a magic, you know, wave of the hand and the foundation would automatically come off and be ready for the next one. I'd play with foundations all day long and bronzers. I know it seems like eyeshadow is the obsession for me and it is in some ways, but I'm a big fan of like a really nice base. It's all about that base. Corny. <laughs> oh, do you get songs stuck in your head? I do. For me, it's like Taylor Swift songs. It's me. Hi. I'm the problem, it's me. At tea time, everybody agrees. And what's the one where she's talking about people dissing her? You take shots at me like it's Patron. Da -da 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 -da. You need to calm down. Something like that. 7 a.m. You need to calm down. It's such a cute song. Uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> you need to calm down you're being too loud that's a great song like anytime you feel like somebody's hating on you or just unnecessarily like being judgy of you sing yourself that song taylor nailed it with that song love it Okay, see how this is like my natural skin is still coming through, but it's definitely given me some coverage, even things out. I dig this. This is a great summertime foundation where you get a nice dewy look. It's decently lasting. It's going to like get into your pores by the end of the night. I'm going to do one more pump. One more. One more pump. One more pump. I'm going to celebrate. That's not how that song goes. <laughs> One more time. By the way, if you have big pores from like acne when you were a teenager, I have, people always ask me, do you have a nose ring? Do you have a nose ring? No, that's just like a pimple that went awry probably when I was a teenager and I have another one there. I literally take my sponge and press in to make sure that it gets in there. Now I'm gonna do the concealer. 
and we're gonna wrap up this eye look and do the rest of the makeup. But back to essentialism, 10 years later, the book, where I'm at with it right now, I'm like on chapter five, it's really just made me sort of reconfirm messages that I've been giving to my team at work because we, we work on a lot of things. We have a lot of projects going on at any given point in time and it's just, it's hard to do it all. And we're all in a position where we should probably be delegating a number of things to the staff that help support the work. Like we're all workaholics, we all want to do it all. And I'm like, well, we also need to you know, cultivate the leadership of our younger staff and teach them how to do things. And when we're trying to do it all ourselves, we're not helping other people learn and grow. But it's like this mindset, right? We have to, and I'm just as guilty as anybody else, because I'm used to doing it all, we have to really sort of coach ourselves and the people around us to learn to share the responsibilities with others and depend on others. That's part of it too, right? Like you have to trust and depend that others will do work too and that you'll be able to help them if they need the help. It's kind of a hard thing to let go of. But essentialism, what are the big things, the big priorities that you want to be sure to pay attention to first and foremost, first and foremost? so that you're making room in your life for those. I don't like this. I don't like when <laughs> in makeup people create these harsh lines on the side. I'm gonna buff that out a bit. It just, it just doesn't feel natural to me. It feels, I mean, this is already like an overdone look. And then when you create these harsh lines, maybe some people like that. I, I can't say that I like them. Let's mellow that out a bit. More natural. So I'm just gonna try to like buff this in a little bit more because it got a little bit crazy on this side. Oh, I'm gonna take some of that concealer and blot it up there to kind of, duh, why didn't I think about that before? To kind of clean up the excess eyeshadow that I blended too high. I kind of like how this is coming together. Are you in the audience going, stop? No one to quit, Veronica. It always comes together, friends. It always comes together. You gotta have faith. So I am actually gonna go back into the palette to do under the eyes. I think I'm gonna use this dark matter on the outer corner, and then I may hmm, use Mars in the middle, and then and then this one here, this quasar in the inner corner to sort of mimic what's happening on top. Wish me luck. This could be the place where the entire look continues to just fall apart. I'm actually gonna use this. <laughs> this is the plastic cover that comes in the thing to catch any fallout. I actually have these things that you can paste under your eye to catch fallout, but I'm so lazy about it. So today's July 4th. We got some steaks to grill, and that's kind of about it. Look at all the foundation coming off on this thing. So nasty. I'm gonna film a video or two for the other channel. And we're gonna make steaks and relax and watch TV. Rock number four. <laughs> I don't know if my husband would say those are his four big rocks or he, if he would even know what I'm talking about. I mean, I think he's in with me on the family piece, like prioritizing our family for sure. But I don't know if he would, you know, if I talked to him about the rocks, if he'd be like, what? What are you talking about? Well, that escalated quickly. I played myself with that color. It's so pigmented. <laughs> Talk about a smoky eye, smoky. Maybe it's just straight up burnt. It's not smoky, it's burnt. You burnt yourself, girl. You don't burnt yourself. All right. Let's do the rest of the eye. I'm going to go off camera. I love it when YouTubers say this. I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to do my eyeliner and my eyelashes and I'll be back. Okay, I finished the eye look. <laughs> it's crazy dramatic. Poor husband walked in and was like, whoa, what is that? I don't like it. I'm like, just trust me, it will come together. I like it. I do. Is it a daily look? Absolutely not. Is it fun to film in? Sure. And so remember, we have that like goldish greenish color on here. There's that like silvery color there. Well, I'll show you in the palette. What am I doing? Can I just show you the palette and talk from there? Remember, 
that we put this color on the outside and all through the crease, which was a crazy move. But I like the smokiness that it gave and the way that it worked out. I remember from a long time ago, when you think about smoky looks, the key is to not do what I did today. Like, don't bring it too far up into the socket. Keep it low. Keep it low and sultry. Me and my crazy self, I decided to blend all the way up and then had to overcorrect. So anyway, outer V and crease was this color. Then this beautiful gray color, Mercury, is here and here. This color, Quasar, is what's on this space. And then I took this color here, super, what do you call it? Super cluster, I'm trying to read backward. And I put that on the inner corner. And then underneath, I used the darkest shade and then also a little black eyeliner. I put the gray in the middle. And then, then I got some of this Quasar on the inner part. I am always, so... Let me just say this. I look forward to playing with this more. I actually like this look. It's really insane. It'll be fun to play with some of the other colors and stay on the lighter side, but we're going to have fun with this uh, Cosmos palette. And if you know anything about me, I'm obsessed, obsessed with outer space, period. Let's talk about that in another video, like the beyond beyond what we understand. I'm always wanting something super light for the inner, 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 the inner quarter, and then also under the eyebrows. And I keep coming back to this flexitarian color from ColourPop. This is one of their super shock cheek shadows. It's supposed to be a highlighter for the cheeks, but I use it for the inner, inner just did it again, the inner, inner corner, the inner corner. Can I pause? Who out there is a fan of Stranger Things? I don't know why I just thought about that because either corner, inner corner, either corner made me think of the upside down, which is part of that show. I don't know the connection in my mind between those two things. I'm waiting for the final season to come on. If you know anything about it, I'm desperate to find out. Please share. My husband broke my heart and said, I think it's supposed to come out next summer. And I was like, what? I've been waiting for season five this summer. But back to this. I always want a really bright inner corner uh, color. And I always find myself wishing that there was a color like this in all of my eyeshadow palettes. So this is kind of a staple in the collection. So that's the eye look. And then I put on some crazy dramatic Ardell, I don't know what these are called. They're not wispies. There's something else, but, um, eyelashes and then overstructured my eyebrows like I usually do. I just can't figure out how not to do that. And then I spent all this time trying to like pat the corners out. Story of my life. For bronzer, actually it's going to be more like a contour e effect. This is from Bobbi Brown, the bronzing powder, and it's in the color natural. The light is changing on me. Uh, and I'm just loving my Sonia G brushes. I just do. This is the Niji Pro. That's a big sort of bronzer kind of brush. And I'm just going to place it under there to give my cheek a little lift so I also wanted to talk with y'all about the yucca palette <laughs> do you guys remember that video where I talked about the Natasha Denona yucca palette and basically said I don't like it I don't want to buy it it looks ugly I don't like the colors I don't like the demos that were done on the models and the, the looks that they're advertising with the palette well some YouTubers that I love, like Angelica, is that her name? Angie Nyquist? I think that's her name. And also, well, she used to be called, I was going to say Sweaty Looks. That's not her name. Alicia Archer. <laughs> I'm mixing up fragrance YouTuber called Spicy Looks with Alicia Archer's name. It's not Sweaty Looks. Funky Sweat? Spicy Sweat? I don't remember what she used to be called, but her channel is now called Alicia Archer, who I, I adore that woman. And by the way, she does these fitness classes. I took one. I should took, take a lot more. I should just do fitness classes with her, but I can't sync up my schedule to hers. Morgan Turner, all of these folks who I've been watching on YouTube, these makeup YouTubers, really love the palette. And then my friend on the fragrance side, Joss, hey Joss, at Joss's Fragrance Mixology recently purchased the palette and she really likes it. And we tend to have pretty similar taste in eyeshadows. So I'm like, do I want the palette? So it's July 4th and Natasha Denona is running a 20% off sale, including on that palette. And I may order it. I can't believe I'm saying that because I trashed it or the concept of it rather, because I never played with it on that video. 
But seeing all these other videos where people are just loving it, I get FOMO too, you all. I'm influenced just like the next person. So I think I may go on and get the Yucca palette. I wanted to say because on that eyeshadow video, the last declutter video, I forgot. This is, this is another sort of lesson. I hadn't planned on really talking about this in this video. But in terms of the declutter thing, I can almost promise you 95% of the time, you are not going to regret decluttering things. There may be a thing or two that you let go of that later on you're like, maybe I should have kept that. But at least for me, my own experience is that when I declutter, I'm usually done. Like I don't think about the thing again or I rarely think about it. There have been a couple of cases on the, it hasn't happened on the makeup side, only on the fragrance side, a few like vintage -y fragrances that I've decluttered that later regret it. That's like three, three out of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of fragrances that I have loved on and passed along and all of that. I almost forgot why I brought this up. In that eyeshadow overview and declutter video, I'm getting too much into my hair here. I forgot to mention that I had and am trying to sell, I haven't posted it on Mercari yet because I'm dingling and haven't taken the pictures and done the listing, the Natasha Denona Tropic Palette and the Safari Palette. Who remembers the all matte palette that Natasha Denona brought out? Which I like, I love the gray row and I, I do like the other colors, but truth be told, it's not the palette that I desire to reach for as much as the others. And so I decided to let it go, even though let it go means it's sitting in my closet. And I need to take pictures of it and get it posted to Mercari. Okay, I think I've over bronzed slash contoured, bronzored, contour bronze, bronzored myself to death here. Let's do the nose. But the point that I'm making is that objects, objects, regardless of how we collect them or not, they're easy to forget. Like that's not the important stuff in life. So my point is have fun with them. And when you're done with them, pass them along, sell them, give them away. You know, I'm not big for throwing stuff away unless it's just completely useless. I never really throw stuff away. Somebody wanted to have an argument with me in the comments once about that. It was on the other channel when I was showing my fragrance collection. Someone about had a heart attack and was like, oh my God, I can't believe you're talking about rehoming your fragrances. They're not really rehomed. They just end up in a landfill and the person just had like a, an ax to grind. And I was like, pump your brakes, buddy. I think it was a dude. I don't know if it was, was it a woman? I don't know. But pump your brakes. Stop worrying about what I'm doing with objects over in my house. Worry about your own damn house. I know where my objects are ending up and it's not in a landfill, so. As we used to say in college, cogelo con take it easy, man. Cogelo con take it easy. <laughs> Chill out. People get uber excited about how other people are living their lives and what other people are doing with the objects in their life. It's, it's unbelievable the way that people like crusade and campaign about what's happening up in your house. Worry about your own house. You know, worry about your own budget. How about that? Worry about your own house, worry about your own objects. If you wanna live a minimalistic life and not have a lot, more power to you. I applaud you. Why are you worried about what I'm doing with my stuff? Why, people? Okay, let's do, ooh, I'm not liking what's happening here, look. <laughs> I didn't even powder my face. Uh, maybe I have too much product caked up right there. We're gonna let that go. Let's do a little cheek, a little lip, and let's curl the quaff. And let's call it a day. Boom, boom. Do I want a pink or coral or peach cheek or mauve? I don't know. I wish that y'all were here sometimes so you could like advise me. I wish I could like pop up a poll in real time and people could choose, help me choose. <laughs> I love these buxom, uh, what do you call these? Blushes. Buxom blushes. I'm feeling this corally color versus the pinky color. This is Ibiza and this is Mykonos. Mykonos. What if I layer them? <sighs> Let's try that. Here we go, doing the most again. Buckle in your seatbelts, friends. Oh my gosh, I was all over the place. What I was trying to tell you with the eyeshadow palette thing, <laughs> Tropic and Safari, I didn't think about them again. I took them out of the drawer and I haven't thought about them again. So this is the more peachy one, Mykonos. And it's okay, like 
Just let go of stuff, y'all. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Be happy. Woo! That's some color. Don't worry. Be happy. And for those of you that have channels, my fellow content creators, don't worry about what other people think about what you have or don't have. You worry about how you feel about it. That's all that matters. If you, in your heart of hearts, feel like you have too much, downsize. If you want more, get more. But don't worry about what anybody else thinks about how you are living your life. It's a hard thing to do when you're a content creator. I always take a little bit and put it through the eye look. I don't know if that's actually like a good thing, but that's what I do. Anyway, as a content creator, it can be really hard not to worry about what other people think because you're putting out content for people to watch and react to. So naturally, naturally, there's a part of you that's wondering, how is XYZ going to be received? But I find, and tell me what you think, I find that as a viewer myself, I enjoy those creators that are really just themselves. Within reason, I mean, you don't want to be a jerk, you know? You don't want to be on camera, like, gossiping about others, talking smack about other creators and things like that, putting people down, just being nasty. But other than that, if people are themselves, I tend to enjoy that more than if they are saying what they think I want to hear. I'm also at a point in my life, and let me know if you're at this point, where I can appreciate that other people think differently from me about whatever it is, be it politics, religion, money, consumerism. I am totally okay with people having different thoughts about that than I have. But I have my own thoughts too, and I like to share them with you. And you're welcome to enjoy those thoughts, or, or you're welcome to go, you know, Veronica, I just, that's not how I see things. And it's fine. It, that's the whole thing. Like, it's fine. You're entitled to have your own mind and your own thoughts about things, is all I'm saying. YSL, this is the Touche Clot, Touche Clot 3D All Over Glow Compact Powder. And I, oh, you know what? I haven't done highlighter. But let me do this first. I like that this gives like an overall just quick airbrush. Look at that. Look what it, did you see what it did? It like airbrushes everything together. It's like this brilliant magic thing that I never knew I needed until I bought it. I do want to do a little bit of highlighter and then we'll do the lip. I'm going to use good old Revlon Skin Lights. This is in the color 201 Daybreak Glimmer. And I'm just going to use a fluffy, very loose brush like this for highlighter on the cheeks. I haven't done highlighter in forever, I feel like. Normally, I've been using like on the regular primers that have highlighters in them like the Natasha Denona Hydra Zen one and the iconic London uh, under you know makeup primer that creates a glow and that actually does really nicely for me but I didn't use that today so I'm going to do a little bit of extra highlight amigos y amigas it is time for los labios the lips oh I didn't do the layering on the cheeks should I or should I leave it alone Let's go for the gold. <laughs> Let's go for the gold. So I'm gonna use the pink one that's Ibiza and do like a little, a little tap. A little strawberry shortcake tap right there. All right, I'll dig it. I was looking for a matte pink that had a little bit of color to it, uh, but I needed it to be matte. So I'm going with this Revlon 003 Pick Me Up in matte. This is a matte shade. I am going to do a heavy liner. And I'm going to go with the Jaclyn Smith. Is it Smith? I don't remember her last name. But the Jaclyn Cosmetics Bourbon Lip Liner. So that's what the lip liner looks like. I like that it will give some depth behind the color of the lipstick. Let's do that. And then we'll go to hair. All right, that's generally the look. I'm gonna so friends, here we are right with back. the finished look. What do you think of the look? What do you think of the palette? 
And I really would love to hear from you. What are your big priorities? If you think about the concept of essentialism, applying to the things in your life that you pay the most attention to, that you prioritize above all else so that you can make sure that you make room for them. What are those things in your life? I'm curious to know if you're willing to share. You heard mine. And if you're not, that's okay. Thanks for hanging out with me. Take care. See you in the next video. Bye.